I want you to turn to Romans 8, 26. Now this is the Amplified. It says, so too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid or helps us, bears us up in our weakness, our infirmities, for we don't know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads on our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings that are too deep for utterance. Like, I mean, I find that amazing that he will actually go and plead on my behalf before the Father. Like, I don't even ask him to. He just goes and does it. He just goes and does it. So... In eight, Romans 8.26, we see that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us on earth. Romans 8.34 says that Jesus intercedes for us in heaven. Hebrews 7.25 says Jesus ever lives to intercede for us. So right now, as we are sitting here, right now, as we are sitting in this room, you have the Holy Spirit interceding for you on earth, and you've got Jesus interceding for you in heaven. So for those times you feel backed into a corner, those times when you feel your prayers aren't going higher than the ceiling, those times when you think God's not anywhere, good, nothing's happening, God's not hearing, no one's praying for you, you have the Holy Spirit and Jesus in agreement praying over your life. How dare we complain? That no one's praying for us, no one's standing with me, no one's agreeing with me, that I'm all by myself. You are never by yourself. He is omnipresent. He is always with you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You carry him everywhere you go. But to think that every minute of my life, 24-7, I have the Holy Spirit praying on earth and Jesus praying in heaven. So if I want to really know how to learn to pray, I've got to slip into that slipstream between the two. And join up with the Holy Spirit and join up with Jesus and pray in accordance with the prayers that are coming from the throne room. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. Have we ever stopped to say, Holy Spirit, thank you for interceding for me. Jesus, thank you that you ever live to intercede for me, that as the high priest, you are continually bearing our names before the Father. And so they intercede. We can lie to the Holy Spirit like they did in Acts chapter 8. They lied to the Holy Spirit. I'm oh, sorry, Acts chapter 5. They lied to the Holy Spirit. We can reject him. We can be stiff-necked. We can be stubborn. And in all of that, he still prays. He still intercedes. But he won't override our free will. But in Romans 8, 26, it says, you help me in my infirmities. When I don't know what to pray, Holy Spirit, you do. You. How many times have we thought, I don't know how to pray about this? Thank God for a heavenly language. Thank God for heavens, for tongues, right? But he helps us. He comes to our aid. And that word helps is an enormously long Greek word. It is Strong's G4878, for those of you who are interested, it's Strong's G4878. And it is, translation is probably wrong, but it is Sun Antilambanum Ahi, like it's long. He helps us. He Sun an, Sun Antilambanum Ahi helps us. Like it's this enormous Greek word for the word helps. But that means he takes up your cause. He champions you. Then he comes to help you. He actually champions what you're going through. He champions you. He takes up your cause. He carries it for you. He comes alongside of you and he says, you know what? I, it's like a tug of war and you're tugging on something. You want to manifest something from heaven and you've got this tug of war going on because maybe the flesh doesn't want it to manifest. Maybe the demonic doesn't want it to manifest. But you're tugging because, man, I know this is the will of God and I'm going to manifest this on earth and he comes and he joins your end of the tug of war and he heaves on it with you. Oh my gosh, you don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. He tugs 
on that for you. How dare you think you can ever lose? How dare you think you can ever be victimized? He tugs on that with you. He carries it for you. He champions you. He stands before the Father. He prays for you. He intercedes for you. He carries it for you. He's your strength. He's your glory. He's the one who does it all. He is the one that brings God assistance to you. He is amazing in everything. He says he makes intercession. Not only does he help us and champion you and carry your cause for you, not only does he do all of that and heave on things with you like in a tug of war, but he makes intercession. And that intercession is G5241. And I had to write it out with all these initials and things between it. It's Huperen Tung Kano. Huperen Tung Kano. Say it real quick, nobody would ever know. I don't know what I'm saying. But the hooper is hyper, over and above. It means exceedingly. And then the tunkano means aggressive action. Let's get rid of the dove thing, right? Because the dove thing is gentle, meek, mild, easily disturbed, doesn't always rest. Let's understand the Holy Spirit for who he truly is. He came like a dove, doesn't mean he is one right? The dubs of purity. But what it is, is this Tung Kano is an aggressive action. He throws himself into the midst of what's going on in your life and gets involved in it with you. Talk about that violent involvement. Aggressive. Aggressive. We don't even understand what that means. If you think about something you've gone through, can you think about the power of the Holy Spirit coming in and just, I'm going to get in alongside of this with you and I'm going to heave on this. I'm going to champion your cause. I'm going to carry it for you. I am going to get aggressively involved in this until this turns out right. Yes, come on. How awesome is the Holy Spirit? Come on. God, the Spirit. He gets this righteous anger. This righteous indignation at what the children of God or what people, oppressed people are going through. And he wants to release you. He wants to set it right. That's what he's here for. But we don't give him a chance because we don't give him a split second of our time. And if we do give him a split second, it is so orchestrated by us. We move in the gifts we're comfortable to move in. Only if we think... Or no, it's him. What about moving in the gifts you're not comfortable in? What about allowing him to enlarge you, to stretch you, to, uh, to enlarge your capabilities and your capacities so that you truly get to know who he is and how he works? I love the fact that he gets aggressively involved in what's going on in my life. He makes a case for me. In John chapter 16, where it calls him the comforter. Now, the number of times I I ask the Holy Spirit, comfort me. Oh, Holy Spirit, comfort me. I need some comfort. I sort of wrap myself in his presence, I thought, like a doona. Probably not a bad prayer, but it has nothing to do with comfort. It actually means in the Greek, he's your defense attorney. He's making a case for you. He's going into the courts of heaven and he's pleading your case and your cause before the judge. He's the counsel for your defence. He's your advocate. He's your defence counsel. He's the lawyer who defends you and represents you in the courts of heaven. How amazing is our Holy Spirit? So when he is our parakletos, don't just think of helper, legal advocate, powerhouse, a glorious intruder. He over and above strikes out against all of our infirmities in an aggressive way. And we're going to talk about those infirmities because he rises up with a righteous indignation. And we don't, we don't understand. And we don't lean on it. Don't lean on it. <laughs> Apart from the fact that it's broken, the Lord told me not to lean on the pulpit. We don't understand. I'm learning, Lord. We don't understand how upset the Holy Spirit gets. With sin, 
unrighteousness, oppression, violence. He gets upset that infirmities plague the body of Christ. He gets upset that there are demonic attacks that seem to be winning in the body of Christ. And he wants to help you now. But half the time we don't think about the Holy Spirit helping us in an aggressive way, championing our cause, rising up before the judge, speaking on our behalf. He rips the, the weakness of the flesh or the, wanting to rip the weakness of the, of the infirmity, the weakness of the flesh, the demonic attack away from our lives, wanting to separate us from it. Understand, like, you know, talk about Rambo on steroids. <sighs> not really the Holy Spirit, but understand what I'm saying. He has this, this passion in him to separate you from stuff that is destroying you, like the 50 fruits of pride. 50 fruits of pride. He wants to rip that out of our lives so that Christ is fully conformed in us, so that, that we mature in the things of God, so that we become everything Christ is. And, and release or represent Christ well on the earth. But he's got such a little, not little, but a still small voice. And he waits for us to pay attention. He waits for us to pay attention. He is jealous over you. Anything that disrupts your, your relationship with the Father or the Son. He is jealous about that. When the kids were really, really little, just after the divorce and the kids were little, they'd go to bed at night. Well, I put them to bed because they were too young to put themselves up. They'd go to bed and I would put the TV on just for noise, just for the comfort to have adult voices in the house because it was so freaky quiet. When my husband had left and the, the divorce is through and the children are all in bed and everything's quiet. And so I'd have the TV on just playing in the background while I sewed or did whatever. And the Holy Spirit said to me one day, turn off the TV. And I thought, but then I'll hear noises. <laughs> you know, like, I really like the TV on at night. I like that. And I turn off the TV. And I said, Lord, Super Spiro, <laughs> if that's really you, give me a scripture. <laughs> Psalm 101 verse 3, set no wicked thing before your eyes. Yeah. There we go. TV's off. But a little bit later, it crept back in. And, you know, the same thing. He's jealous over our relationship with the Lord. But there were certain shows I wanted to watch. So I'd sit up to watch them. And as soon as it came on, I would see the opening minute and a half, I'd fall sound asleep. <laughs> and I would wake up as the credits roll at the end. <laughs> it was all the time, like it was just like clockwork. So, okay, okay. But you know, and he's jealous over you, over anything that steals your relationship away from the Father, over anything that would dilute our devotion. He's yeah. jealous over that.